Now let's look at the composition of uh, quantum operations. Any physically admissible operation can be composed. So we can perform one operation and then another operation. Or we can perform two operations in parallel at the same time on two different subsystems. Um, so now, given a map, an operation that can be described in terms of Krauss operators, it's relatively easy to see how we can describe in terms of the Krauss operators the resulting map. So for example, let's look at the sequential composition, sequential concatenation. We have map A that is described by the Krauss operators AI and map B that is described by the Krauss operators BJ. So it's, it's easy to see that uh, the resulting map is described by the Krauss operators which are products of A and B. So the, in particular, the, to be precise, uh, the, the new Krauss operators uh, of the form BJAI. So that means that the initial, the input density operator is then mapped to sum over ij, bj, ai, rho, ai, dagger, bj. Right, so we can, we can see that the first we have the A channel acting on the density operator, that's the first operation, and then we have the B channel acting on the resulting density operator. And you can see that uh, this is a trace preserving map as long as A and B are trace preserving uh, maps. Uh, and we see that because uh, when we check the whether the completeness relation is satisfied, so we just check what is the AI dagger, BJ dagger, BJ AI, right? So we first do the summation over J, we get the identity, then we do the summation over I, we get the identity. So the whole thing is equal to the identity, so the trace is preserving. Uh, so this is a trace preserving map. And of course also, uh, if A and B are written in the Krauss form, they are also positive map. So altogether the result is also a positive and, uh, and trace preserving map. Now, uh, let's look at uh, the parallel composition. So we have a parallel concatenation, we have two subsystems, we perform on one of them operation A, on the other one operation B, and operations A and B are then again described by the Krauss operators AI and BJ. And then again it's easy to see that uh, the resulting Krauss operator of, of, um, of this concatenation are AI tensor BJ. And we can check whether this is a trace preserving map simply by looking at this expression A dagger I tensor BJ dagger times AI tensor BJ, which is uh, equal to sum over K AI dagger AI tensor BJ dagger BJ. Now this is a trace preserving map, so this has to sum to the identity. So this summation here is over I and J, and I have I and J here. And so I sum over I and the, I get identity here, and I sum over J and I get identity here simply because B is a trace preserving map. So the tensor product of the two identities is the identity. So that's uh, again uh, we have a situation where um, given that the two maps A and B have uh, the Krauss decomposition, the resulting parallel concatenation has also the Schmidt decomposition and uh, th uh, has the Krauss decomposition, sorry, and uh, that means that uh, um, if uh, A and B are positive tra trace preserving, which they are because they have the Krauss decomposition, then the resulting thing is also um, positive and trace preserving. And that is, that is actually not so 
trivial. That means actually that the Krauss um, decomposition maps that have the Krauss decomposition have um, actually stronger property than just being positive. As you will see in a moment, the fact that we can have a parallel composition of positive maps and get positive map is not trivial. Sometimes we can uh, we can have a concatenation parallel concatenation of positive maps, mathematically speaking, and get something that is not positive. Mm -hmm. But uh, when we, when each sub which constituent map has the Krauss decomposition, then we are sure that uh, uh, the concatenation of two positive operations is a positive. So that, that, that stronger property is called complete positivity, but uh, we will just uh, discuss it in a moment in, in more detail.